Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm gonna walk you through a real debugging process. Um, someone had an issue at work and I told them what the answer was without actually walking through it. Uh, but then they followed up and were like, hey, it would be really cool to know like how you, how you got to that end state. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you through how I approach problems with a real world issue. Now, of course, I already know the answer because I've encountered this many times before, but I figured I'd walk you through it just to show you. All right, so we're on my work machine today, which uh, is a M1 Mac, which is important for this, uh, <laughs> this reproduction at least, um, since it happens to deal with architectures and other stuff like that, um, but that's not important to the process. Uh, and let me just set the stage for where they were. They had set up a virtual environment with Python 3.10, they were working with one of the Google clients, uh, client libraries. I'm just gonna use Google Cloud Secret Manager. So I know that that one downloads quickly <laughs> for no other reason. Uh, and they were trying to import it. So in this case, from google.cloud, import secret manager. And this is kind of the entry point to their issue. They got this big old stack trace and didn't really know what to do. Uh, now, I've seen probably thousands or tens of thousands of Python stack traces at this point, and I actually have a video on how to read them that I will link in the description, uh, but I'll give you a TLDR of that here. So uh, usually when you're looking at a Python stack trace, the most important part of it is right at the bottom. And this is an intentional design, design decision by Python to put the uh, important stuff as close to where you'd be looking for your you know, next command entry. You know, you're looking you're looking directly above where your little cursor is uh, and so the most important information in a stack trace is usually this very last frame of code and the error type and then some part of the error message and from this error uh, we get kind of a, a weird import error and um, the first thing that I'm thinking in this situation, and, and this person might not have been thinking that because they don't have this experience, uh, but my first thing that I'm thinking is I'm on an M1 I'm already suspicious of the, the machine to start with. You know, there's probably gonna be some sort of M1 stuff that I'm gonna run into at some point. And that's kind of been the experience with M1 so far. And if you look at this error message, you'll see that it, you know, it's an import error, DL open. I know what this means, but I wouldn't really understand, expect anyone else to understand this stuff. Uh, and then it tells you a file here, which is useful. And we get incompatible architecture. And this is like the most important piece of this error message to me. This is what I would search. Uh, but even if you don't search that, uh, let's take the most important parts of this error message. So first, like this last frame of code, I think that's pretty important. So let's grab this and go to, <laughs> spoilers, here's the Google Cloud Secret Manager. Uh, we're gonna go to Google and we are going to search for that last frame. I'm also going to include import error here since that's the exception type and that's usually pretty important. Notice that I'm putting these in quotes. Uh, this tells Google, well, if it's a phrase, it tells Google to specifically look for this phrase. If it's a single word, it forces Google to include that particular error uh, or particular word in its results. And this is probably enough to actually get us a, a useful result here. Um, and if I knew a little bit more, I would probably also include this incompatible architecture, but it turns out we don't actually need that. So from here, I would probably click through. Usually if I see GitHub or Stack Overflow, those are usually pretty good results. Um, or, you know, this, this gRPC, you know, we saw gRPC here, so I might also click through to this one, although it's Google Groups, and I usually find that Google Groups gives, like, not the best, um, not the best output, so we'll probably not look at that one. But let's start with this one. Uh, where we see that someone has encountered the same error that we see, although theirs is a little bit different. Cannot import name. It's probably not the same error as ours. Uh, we scroll down a little bit. Let's see if someone else has, nope, that's not the right error. So I would probably ignore this first tab and then try and find another, um, you know, another few of these. So maybe I'll open these two. Um, but at this point, I've, I've also kind of figured out that it's gRPC. So maybe maybe that's involved here. Let me scroll through this one. This one also doesn't have any good information. Uh, we scroll through this one. Uh, ooh, platform.architecture. That sounds useful to what we're looking at. Although they're on Catalina, so it's probably not the same issue. Oh, and this one got quotes, so nothing useful there. 
Uh, this one is probably old. Yeah, this one's 2016, so that's probably not that helpful. You see that we're, you might see that we're striking out a little bit here. This is probably not what we're what we're looking for for all these things. So let's try adding a little bit more of our error message here. And actually, let's just grab the whole error message. That might be helpful. Uh, let's just slap that on the end. Uh, oftentimes, when there's too much stuff, you'll get something like this. You know, that's not not super helpful. Uh, but I, one thing I noticed is my my path isn't here, so we probably can get rid of that part here. Maybe, and that'll maybe give it something more to go off of. Get rid of that part. And oh, we got another another path here that it's probably trying to search. Let's get rid of that one too. Uh, let's try this again. Ah, and we get, this is actually the, the cause of this, is this particular issue here. I know this already, but uh, now that we've eliminated more of the like, less useful parts of the error message, we've landed exactly on the problem that we're looking for. Actually, this is like a seven month old issue, which is kind of surprising. You, I would have hoped they would have fixed it by now, but I guess not. Uh, literally all they need to do is delete a file off of PyPI and re-upload one that's not broken. Um, but if we scroll through this, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of messages here. I'm gonna skip through all the messages. You, I would recommend if you're trying to debug a problem that you read through and try and glean the information from it. Uh, there is an important workaround somewhere in here, uh, which is to uninstall GR grpcio. Where is it? Uh, somewhere in here. <laughs> anyway, there's there's a bunch of messages in here, but the the answer ends up being that grpcio is uh, packaged incorrectly on PyPI. Uh, they've uploaded a universal two wheel, which I've done a video on wheels. I'm not going to reiterate that here. Uh, universal two means that they package both ARM64 and x86-64 into the same wheel. However, they didn't do that, and that's that's the actual problem. Uh, and so the fix is usually to uninstall and then reinstall ignoring that wheel. So if we did something like pip uninstall grpc.io, uh, uh, what is the actual package? <laughs> pip freeze grab grpc, an actual package. Oh, it is grpc.io. Why do I not have pip uninstall grpcio? Oh, I did pip install uninstall. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, so I think one of the workarounds was to pip pip install grpcio and then no binary all. Of course, it to build it from source, and so that'll force me to get the right, right architecture. Um, and it takes forever because it's a C++ package. That's one of the workarounds. The other workaround, I believe, is to install the pre-install version, which is the latest one. Um, but this is, you know, this is kind of how I would poke around, use Google to find the actual results. Uh, the other thing that I would do, let's actually cancel this so that we get the broken one again. The other thing that I might do is, uh, if we look at this error message again, it gives us a few file paths, particularly this one here. Uh, and you might use the file utility to poke at this. So I know I'm supposed to be on ARM64, but if we look at this file here, we'll see that it's, you know, it's 64 bit, but it's only x86 64. So that's probably the problem. Um, and so that might be another approach that I use to debug this is to poke around at the, the particular files that it complains about here. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of a, an example of how I poke through a debugging process on a particular problem. Now, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.